Hey, welcome to Church Experience. Thank you so much for spending part of your weekend with us. Now's a great time to grab your pens and weeklies and head to your seats if you haven't already, because the service starts in 90 seconds. Hey, welcome to Church Experience Online. We are so happy that you're here with us today. We're about to worship and get into God's word and we believe that today is going to be spiritually impacting and move you closer to a full life in Jesus Christ. But before we jump into today's service, I wanna encourage you to take a quick minute and hit that subscribe button so that you never miss a service. And also either right now or right after the service, share this with somebody that you love so that they don't miss out on what God has planned for them as well. Well, let's go ahead and jump into today's worship and let's see what God has for us today.
search the world but I couldn't fail me melt empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough 
Then you all came along And put me back together And every desire is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, there's nothing To show you my weakness My failures and flaws Lord, you've seen them all And you still call me faith Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me
mighty in power, the same spirit that lives in us is the one that raised you, that raises the dead and brings them to life. That turns graves into gardens, that what we think might be dead, unsalvageable. Lord, you tell us there's beauty in that. God, we just thank you. We thank you for your power. We thank you that through all things, with all things, with you by our side, we can do it all. So God, we thank you. Lord, transform us in a way, let us experience you like we've never experienced you before. And we pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. It's always a good year when we start off with some reggae music, isn't it? That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Carmelo. That was, uh, that was awesome. We're in week 40 of a church plan. Week 40. And now we can say that this church store was started last year. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that, isn't that great? I don't know how much longer I can keep counting. I mean, I did maths at school. I went to high grade maths. So I don't know how much longer I can keep counting. Maybe when we get to a year, I'll do some balloons or something. But uh, it is a joy to be with you this morning. Uh, we, we kind of... Uh, since Christmas, we've been doing this little mini series on joy. So the last few weeks, we've been talking about joy, and it's it's just been really good. Uh, Happy New Year! It's it's. Uh, I'm excited. I'm so excited, and I'm living with so much expectancy about what God's doing in the life of this church. Uh, I was just thinking last week after church, we went out for lunch with a couple that uh, that just got engaged, and they want they want me to marry them, and and when he proposed to her and and she said yes she says on one condition i'll say yes and he anything and she said i want warren to, warren to marry us and i was just and then after we went to see some fireworks with some friends and i was reminiscing at the end of the night that all these people that we just spent you know all that was people that i hadn't even known this time last year and i was just thinking isn't that awesome doesn't that just you know if you're living in that expectancy you're just encouraged by what god's doing in in the future and i'm just i'm so encouraged by the life and the fruit that's coming out in the life of this church and and, um, you know, we're, in the, we, we fi- we, we're finishing up this, this series on joy, and it's just been, it's been great to, to kind of see if we do, we, when we dig deep about joy and what it means. And, and I wanted to start off, when you think about joy, I, I came across this, this video. And when I see this video, I, I just think of joy. That's the one word I, I think of when I see this video. So here's the video I want to show you. <laughs> no, you okay. What about me? <laughs> You've been with us for a few weeks. I just want to honor. Can we honor yeah. James, folks? Yeah. It's been a it's been a joy to have you with us, and it's been wonderful. And I hope to see you guys again soon. But it's just been it's been wonderful to just show them America, and just I, I taught Dad how to drive on the right hand side of the road yesterday last night, which was cool. So it's baby steps, you know. It's baby steps. But it's just, uh, you know, I was thinking about joy and, and how to land this, this series. And, and I thought a, a lot of different ways of how it looks. And, and I wanted to start off by saying, like, sometimes when my kids obey me, uh, it's not enough. You know, sometimes when our kids, Luke's listening to this one, so I have to get it right now. <laughs> but, um, you know, sometimes I, I, I want them to do it with like a joyful spirit. I want them to do it not because I've asked them, but I want them to do it because they want to, to, to do it. I don't know if that's possible. But, but you know, sometimes our kids maybe... They do it out of compliance because they have to do it, or they do it because they, they know that they should do it, or wh- whatever the case is. And, and I'm sure all the parents out there um, eventually you get to a point where you just give them the look. Do you know the look I'm talking about? You just you guys are nodding. You, you just give the look. You give the look to your kid, and, and they know that you know that they know that you know that you're not messing around. You, you know what I mean? It's like they, they know, okay, dad or mom, they, they, uh, there's no screaming, there's no shouting now. I have to be compliant. 
You know, and so sometimes our kids might be just compliant because they know that they don't want that look or they don't want the punishment, whatever. Now imagine, I want you to picture the scene as, as, as crazy as it might be. Imagine you get home one day and uh, you've had a long day and, and, and you get home and your, your, your kid's there and they says, listen, I know you've had a, a long day. I know it's been tiring. I know you've been working hard. And so I, I've run you a bubble bath and I've lit some candles there, but the LED ones, I don't want to burn down the house. I've done, the, I've done it proper. I've, I've made my bed already. I've got my, my clothes ready for the morning. I've made my lunch for school. I've, I've done everything. I want you to have some me time. Uh, and I just want you to enjoy it. Don't worry about me. I'm going to be quiet and so you can just enjoy it. I'm sure if that happened, you would you'd be, where am I? Am I, am I in a dream? What's happening? I, I don't know because, you, you know what I mean? Like, can you just imagine that scene? And I was thinking about it when we, when we think of joy and and, and our response to God, are we, are we doing it because we think like we have to? Like, do we come to church because we think, oh, we have to do it. God will be pleased with me if I come to church. Or, or do I do it because I want to? I want to be in the presence of my Father. I want to be in the, in the presence of, of my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to be in the body of Christ. Or do I do it because, well, I, I think I should. And it seems like the right thing to do or, you know, whatever the case is. And, and I was thinking about how do we respond to God? Do we respond in the first way or do we respond in the second way? Like, it's a joy to be together. It's a joy to follow Him. It's a joy to step out in faith and, and trust Him. And, and so uh, I wanted to start off by asking a question. And I thought, uh, how do we land the series in joy? And, and there's that uh, saying, go big or go home. Um, it's a saying here as well, apparently. But go big or go home. So I wanted to ask you the question, why are you here? Why are you here? I'm not talking about church. You might think, well, that's a bit of an awkward question. It's still pretty early on a Sunday morning. But why, why are you here? Why, why are you on this planet? Why, are you, why do you breathe? Why is there oxygen that comes out? Why, why are you a being? Why, why are you here? It it's, might be a big question. You might be one. I don't even understand what you're asking me. But why are you here? Why am I here? I was thinking about, about joy. And, and joy permeates all of Scripture. And when you think about it, it, it tells us we must have joy. We must have joy. And it talks about that. But when you think about it, joy is an emotion. It's not a behavior. How can, how can they tell us that, that what if you just don't feel like having joy? Uh, no one can force you with an emotion. It's, it's not a behavior that you can kind of force and train. It's an emotion. How, how can that happen? And I wanted to start off where we, where we kind of talked about last week about, about God is so joyful. He's the, the happiest. He's happier than the happiest person that you know. That's God. He, he is so joyful. He is so happy. And don't you want to be around happy people? I've got a, a friend in South Africa. He's just a joy to be around because when you spend time with him, he just encourages you. He encourages you and he, you know, he talks to you about it. He just, you leave, when I have a you know, conversation, I leave being happier, being more joyful. And isn't that what God is? He wants us to, to go into his presence, to find our joy and then, and to fill us up with joy. And, and that's what it's about. And so, you know, seeking that, that God is happy and his, his gladness, his joy stretches before the beginning, before, before anything, way back then when infinite joy was contained in the Trinity, when the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit delighted to share of the divinity with one another. Isn't that amazing? There was just joy there. So why are you here? Why did he create us? Why, what, did, he, did he create us because he wanted some, some compliant creatures that would... Uh, that would follow him? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, no, I, I don't think that that's... Was he bored? No. Why are we here? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the, the creation of the world was, was an explosion of joy. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a filling up. It wasn't like we added, but a spilling out. It wasn't, it wasn't like we are here to complete God, but it's more out of, out of joy that the, that the divinity had, that the Trinity had, out of that joy that they had, there was this explosion of joy. And, and I want you to think about it. It's not a... It's not a, a filling out, but a spilling out of. We are created. The, the natural world that we live in, everything around us, you and me, everything was created out of an expression of joy, out of this overflow of exceeding joy. I want you to just let that sink in for a moment. In, in their extravagant generosity, the persons of the Trinity decided to, to share their boundless gladness with the work of their hands. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that just give you joy? Like, think about it. You and me are here out of this explosion of joy that the Trinity had. We, didn't, we weren't added to to complete, but we were more. there was a spilling out, this explosion of joy. <laughs> Doesn't that just fill you up with joy that that's why you are here? This, this expression, this overflow, this explosion of joy. 
We are made to be joyful in a joyful God. We, we are made to have found our joy in Him. And, and I mentioned last week that there is a, there is a gap that, that, that is only going to be filled with, with our Father. There's, there's something in us that's, that's missing, and, and we, we have that. But a lot of the people out there just searching. They're going to search for all things. They're going to search for, for the place to find their joy, to find their comfort, to find all these things. And, and they're always going to keep searching because there's a, there's a hole in there that's made just for the Father, just for Jesus. And that's where the joy comes, when we, when we realize that, when we realize we are made by a joyful Father to be joyful. And unfortunately, this, this happily ever after that was created in Genesis 1 and 2, it didn't really last long because Genesis 3 happened and, and we live in, a, in a, what they, a lot of people say is like a Genesis 3 world where there's death and depravity and dysfunction and darkness. And, and um, you might think there's not, but if you think about it, the world's a, a dark place. There's lots of problems out there. A lot of people have lost their way. A lot of us have maybe lost our way in some times of our life and we live in a hard, it's, a, it's hard sometimes, isn't it? There's highs and lows in life. And, and sometimes things happen. We make a bad decision and, and there's a consequence. Sometimes something just bad happens to us. We had, we had no rhyme or reason to realize why it was happening. But we live in a, in a place that can be hard sometimes. I know Jen would often say, our pastor back in South Africa would also say, he says, life is, is brutal but beautiful at the same time. That's what life is. It can be, it can be beautiful, but it can be brutal at the same time. But can we find joy in that? You see, joy, if you look through scripture, joy is not an accessory for a Christian life. Joy isn't something that would turn like our frowns upside down. Joy is way much more than that. You see, joy is tenacious. Joy fights. Joy grips the promises of God and won't let go. You know, there's so many promises of God in the Bible, in scripture, that we can read that can fill us up with joy. And joy grips those promises and never lets go. You see, joy is not merely a good mood. Being in a good mood, it's a, it's a ballast in our boats. It's an anchor in the storms. It's, a, it's an immovable rock that we stand on when the winds of life threaten to flatten us. Joy is that. Joy is, joy is something that our enemy is scared of. Joy is something that's like a shield that protects us. And I'm going to uh, nerd out on you a bit now, but I love Lord of the Rings. Any of you guys like Lord of the Rings? I think there was one person in the first, thank you. There was one person in the first service that liked Lord of the Rings. I'm not alone. But Lord of the Rings, I, it's, it, I feel old because they came out like 20 years ago. I, and you had to wait a whole year for the next one. I was like, you, you come out of, the, out of the, the cinema after the first one and you think, I have to wait a whole year for the next one to come out? Now, obviously, you can watch all of them and all at the same time. But, but there was this one in the first one in the, in, the, um, in the Fellowship of the Ring when Gandalf the Grey is in the Mines of Moria with the Fellowship of the Ring. I know I've lost some of you already. What? Ma Moria? What? And, and they kind of get through the thank you so much. Um, <laughs> But, but he's, going, he's trying to get through this passage, this like bridge, and there's this, there's this uh, bad person, spirit, whatever, called, uh, it's called the Balrog. And, and the Balrog was, didn't want him to, they, he was trying to attack, and, and Gandalf was there, you shall not pass. Do you know that? I, I can just, I can't even do it justice. But he's like, you shall not pass. And, he, and, and the Balrog doesn't, and it falls over. And it's, uh, I'm not going to spoil the, you guys are going to watch it later, aren't you? I'm going to quiz you guys <laughs> next week. It's about three hours, I think, each movie. It's a long movie. But, but I was thinking, that's what joy is. Joy is when the, when the enemy comes, you shall not pass. When, when the storms come, when there's trials, when there's all this stuff, joy is that holding on and say, you shall not pass. I've, I'm holding on, I'm gripping to the promises of God and, and whatever's coming, you shall not pass. You're not allowed in here because uh, like I mentioned, I think last week or the week before that you have to fight for your joy. You really have to fight for it because there's so many things that are trying to take your joy out of it. I'll, I'll give you an example. So, uh, two, half past two this morning, our neighbors, two, two doors down, thought it would be a great time to start karaoke. But not inside their home, outside. They were outside singing karaoke. I'm not even sure when they finished. But, I mean, they were, they were given, you could see they were, they were giving it horns. They were, like, celebrating whatever. They were singing Abba and all these other things. And I was like, I kind of lost my joy a little bit. But then, thankfully, I, I managed to, to go back to sleep. I was tempted to play really loud music this morning outside just to kind of, Help them wake up. But then I realized that they were actually arguing outside already. So I'm like, these folks have had a long night. But there'll be things out there that will try and steal your joy. You know, and you have to fight for it. You have to contend for your joy. And so joy grips the promises of God and never lets go. And when you look through scripture, joy isn't a, like a sub-theme of scripture. Joy permeates the whole scripture, the whole story of, of the scripture of the Bible. It's at the core of the ultimate story. When we look at when you say, what is the gospel? This is what it says in Luke 2.10. It says, the gospel is the good news that will cause great joy. 
When Jesus is talking about death and all this in the parable in, in Matthew 25, 21, he said at the end, come and share your master's happiness. So he's talking about joy and, and how death is not the end. You know, he's talking about that. And then when he talks about prayer in, in John 16, 24, it says, ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. He says the same thing about fellowship. Fellowship of the ring, Lord of the Rings, you know, <laughs> fellowship. I hope to visit you soon. This is in 2 John 12. I hope to visit you soon and talk with you face to face that our joy may be complete. See, something happens. I, I, was, I was thinking about it yesterday. Something happens when we're together. When the body of Christ is together, something happens. We fill each other up with joy. We, 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 we celebrate one another through the highs and lows of life. We encourage one another. I tell you, nothing is as good as, as, as the body of Christ that operates as it should. Nothing is good. I tell you, we can overcome anything together with God when we lead when we are led by him and we follow him and we say Lord it's not us it's you and we and we be led by him I tell you God can do so many wonderful things through us but we have that joy that happens you see joy is a fruit I know sometimes it's easy to lose our fruit but joy is a is a natural flow of the of the life of Christ within us you see joy is the evidence of the fruit that's in us joy is the evidence of Jesus within us you I was thinking about this I don't think that you can fake joy. You, you can fake being happy and you can fake it till you make it. You can, I did that for years. I, I, I pretended I was very happy, but no one knew deep inside I was wrestling with so many things. But I don't think you can fake joy. Joy is something that's just within you. Joy is, joy is kind of the overflow of the, of the fruits of the spirit that comes. When Jesus is in you, the fruit is a natural outward of it. If you think of joy, peace, patience, kindness, Galatians 5, joy is, joy is one of those things. And and we don't, have to, uh, we don't have to fight for it. It's, it's going to be a natural thing. When Jesus is in us, the natural overflow is, it, is the fruits of the Spirit. And one of them is joy. You see, if you think about it, a tree, a healthy tree doesn't have to fight. doesn't have to grit its teeth to produce fruit. It knows that if it's healthy, it's going to produce fruit at the right time. Think about John 15. We talked about it in our, in our Rooted series a, a couple months ago. But John 15 says, says this. It says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that does, bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. That was a bit harsh to hear, wasn't it? I think it, you know, we said that pruning is, is necessary because it's God, God is, is, more involved, is more focused on the lasting fruit than the immediate fruit. And so he prunes so that even greater fruit can come in the future. And so even though pruning can be hard sometimes, we need to trust him with that. And we talked about, about that and... And if we go to verse 4, it says, Remain in me, and I, and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, but it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Then he says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I was thinking about this, about, about abiding in there and, and the fruit that comes out. And, and um, <clears throat> before, before I was a, a pastor, what did Joshua said in the first? He tries, he tries to say, uh, father in a South African accent. You, you get in there, Joshua. I'm enjoying it. Hey, the father. Yeah, the father. You know. <laughs> but I, I was thinking about uh, about this with, um, you know, in my old life, I was uh, I had my own business for many years. I was in recruitment, and I and I and I would look over thousands of of resumes, and and the the unemployment rate in South Africa was 40 percent. And so you can imagine if I put a position online, I just get inundated with hundreds and thousands of. Of, of, of applicants because people were desperate for, and so I didn't have the time to go through every word of every resume to go to, I would, I would try and look very high level, this is my job description and, and what is, you know, this is what I'm looking for for this particular position and, and obviously there's things outside of that, will, they, will this personality fit in and all the rest of it and, and then I started trying to quickly match to see if that resume that I've got is going to match up to the job description that I've got, you know, and so I was thinking about us as a branch, so we're a branch, right? So I was thinking, we're a bit of a branch. And so what is the job description of a branch? So if you and me are a branch, what's our job description? Do you, do you know it? Is our, is, our, is our job description to bear fruit? What do you think? Do you think it's to bear fruit? No, it's, it's, it's to abide. It's to remain. It's to stay in the, to stay in the vine. And, and the natural outcome of if we stay and we abide in him, the natural outcome will be the fruit. And so our... Our job description is not to produce the fruit. Our job description is really just to abide in him and he will produce it. You see, joy is the evidence in our lives that we are abiding in the source of life and that is Jesus. C.S. Lewis said it like this. He said, if you want to get warm, you must stand near the fire. If you want to be wet, you must get in the water. 
If you want joy, power, peace, eternal life, you must get close to or even into the thing that has them. So if we if we cold and we, we want to get warm, we must stand near the fire. You know, if we want to get wet, we must find the thing that's wet and get in the water. But if we want joy and peace, if you think about all the, the fruits of the spirit, if we want all those things, eternal life even mentioned, then you must get close to or even into the thing that has it. And that is Jesus. We we get close to the thing. If we want that, we need to get close to it. We need to abide in him and we abide in him and the the outcome will be the fruit that comes in our life. I was thinking about this also this week, that joy is not about the circumstances that, that we face, but it's, it's really about the purposeful response amidst those circumstances. You see, joy is, is not being ignorant of the trials and the tribulations that we find. Joy is not being oblivious to, to what's going around, but, but joy is really being uh, having the proper perspective of what's happening. So I'll give you an example. So I had a chat with a friend this week who'd lost his job and I felt really bad, bad for him because it came out of nowhere. And so I phoned him to, to try and encourage him. And as I phoned him, he, he was so joyful. Hey, Warren, I, I know that God's got this. He was encouraging me. I, I thought I was going to phone to encourage him. You know, listen, it's going to be okay. You'll find something. He's, I know God's got this. He had the proper response because there was joy in his heart. He, he knew that it's not like he, he knew this was happening. It's not like he... He wished it to happen or whatever the case is. Sometimes these things happen in our life. That's, that's a bit tough. But we have to have a purposeful response. We have to have the proper response. And that is joy. And so he was like, Warren, I'm, I'm good. I know God's got us. I know, I, I know, he, he, I know we're going to get through this. I know he's, I, I, he says I'm, I'm part of a great community, a you know, great church and all the rest. And I know God's got. It just filled me with so much joy to see his response to what's happened. And so we're not oblivious to the hardships around, but we have the proper response to it. Think about a, a branch in the storm. When the storm comes, uh, I, I was, you know, when the, when the storm comes and, and um, what's our response to that? Sometimes a branch might fall off in a storm or whatever. But I was thinking about it. The, the more we abide in Jesus, the more we, 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 we connect it to him. If I just think of it as like a metaphor, the, the, the stronger that connection will be. You know, if we if we close to him and we and we we seeking him daily and we going after him and we 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 following him and we trust in him, the, the stronger that connection will be. So when a storm comes, it's not gonna we're not gonna break off because because we we so close, we we abide in him so tightly and we we gripping onto the promises of God so tightly that 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 the joy can't go, that that he's got us. And I was thinking about it like that. You see, joy for me is is living. With a new perspective, a heavenly perspective, like it says in Ephesians 1, 3. It says, praise be to, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Isn't that amazing? He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Isn't that awesome? Isn't, doesn't that fill you with joy? I, I was thinking about Paul. So Paul, for me, I, I, love, I love the story of Paul. I mean, I, when I think of Paul in, the, in, in Scripture, the highs and lows that this man went through, and yet he says, rejoice always. We, we talked about it last week, about it almost being a command. He actually says it again. I say, rejoice, rejoice always. And I was thinking about, he was, he was writing this when he was, it was one of the last letters that he wrote it. And he was writing it while he was in, in prison, in house arrest. And he was, they say at the time, he was uh, always chained 24 hours a day to a, to a Roman guard. And they would change the guards every eight hours or six hours, depending on. And so I can just imagine he's got like an unwilling participant to share the gospel with every six to eight hours. He's got a new person that he needs to share with. And he's writing there. And, and a lot of the times, uh, how they, uh, the, the judicial system at the time uh, in Rome, they, they wanted, they didn't feed you. They, they, they didn't come and give you food or anything like that. And it was really up to the people that knew you to come and bring you food or water or whatever to help you live. And, and part of the reason why I think the Romans did that is so that a lot of people might might die before they get their court date. And so it just kind of helps the, the flow of, of people going through there. And so, you know, he was, people were bringing, Paul was bringing, people bringing things to Paul and he was writing thankful letters. And that's a lot of the books. Like if you think of the book of Philippians, it's a book on joy and he's writing, thank you so much for your, for your provision for me. And he's, he's writing this while he's probably maybe even been hurt or been beaten because he's still kind of in prison, you know, under house arrest. And, and he's, he's writing this rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. He, he, he says in 2 Corinthians 11, and he talks about his struggles, and he talks about the various things that has happened to him. And he said, five times I've received the 40 lashes, less ones. Three times I've been beaten with rods. Once I was stoned and left for dead. Remember that one. Three times I've been shipwrecked. I mean, being shipwrecked once must be hard. Imagine being shipwrecked three times. I think the one time he even got shipwrecked 
found a, like a piece of land, got on the piece of land, and he got bit by a snake, if I remember correctly. I mean, can you just imagine that? You just, you found land, you're thinking, thank you, Lord, and then a snake bites you. I mean, this guy, man, can you just imagine the hardship that, that Paul went through? He's been in danger from his own people, from robbers and rivers. He goes on and on about everything. He's, uh, you know, he says the daily pressures. He, he's gone through so many struggles, and yet at the end he can say, I want you to rejoice. Find, find the time to rejoice. Rejoice in things always. This is how? And I was thinking, how is that even, how is that even possible? How can he say rejoice when, when things are going bad? It's because he had this joy. It's because he knew he was, he, he was finding the joy now because he knew what the future holds. You see, joy is a present declaration in our future hope. Joy is, is understanding we rejoice now because we know how the story ends, don't we? We know how the story ends, friends. We, we, we live in a, in a time, like they say, we, we live in a already not yet. Jesus is already died on the cross, but we haven't gone to heaven just yet. We, we live in that time and that season in between. And so, but we know what the future holds. We know how the story ends. And that should fill you with joy now. So we, we can have joy now because we declare it now because we know what the future holds. It's like a spoiler alert. We know how the story ends while we're in it. We know what the future holds. And that should just fill us with so much joy because we know how the story ends. And so my, my, my trials that I'm facing now, and oh, 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 this is what he actually says in Romans. Romans 8, 18, he says, For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed within us, revealed to us. I consider the sufferings of this present time not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed to us. Friends, we're gonna, we're gonna, there's going to be a day where every knee will bow and he will wipe away every tear. We know how the story ends. We know. And that should fill us with joy. Whatever we're facing, whatever, whatever trials we're facing, whatever storm we're facing, whatever circumstances we find ourselves in, we know how the story ends. And so we can, we can have the joy and the hope and, and we can live with that now because we, we, we know how it, and all the stuff that we do now is, is temporary. What he says, I, I can't compare it. The, the stuff that I'm struggling with now, like Paul is saying, I can't compare it to the glory that's going to be revealed to us at one stage. This is something that I was, I was wrestling with whether, whether I mentioned it or not. But, but I wrote you that joy is most evident or most clearly seen in our trials, our sufferings, our hardships, our difficulties and our weaknesses. That's when joy is most seen. I, I, I put a picture up of a, of a toothpaste, right? And so if you think of toothpaste, um, you know, when you squeeze it, what comes out? Toothpaste. So when you squeeze us, what comes out? Does joy come out of us when we are squeezed? When there's, when there's trials and sufferings and hardships, what comes out? It's easy to be joyful when, when, when things are going well, isn't it? It's, it's natural. But what about when, when there's trials and when there's struggles and there's hardships? What's coming out of us? And I, I just love this kind of meme because it's, isn't it so true? Like you use all of that in one month, but that last little bit takes you three years to get through. <laughs> and, and I put that one up because, because I, know that, I know that sometimes, this, I know this is true in my life, and maybe it's true in your life. When we are squeezed, maybe joy comes out initially. But the longer we are squeezed, is joy still coming out? Like, what about that last little bit? You, you know, sometimes when a trial comes, we say, I've got so much joy now. I know God's going to provide and he's going to come through. And, and, and we're thinking it's, gonna, it's only going to be a, a week or a month, you know, and then things are going to go back to normal. But what if it doesn't? And we still squeezed a bit more. Will, will, will joy still come out of us? What about if it's taken years to overcome something? What if it's taken years to get through something, to conquer something? To have an answer to prayer, will, will we still be, when we are squeezed, will joy still come out or will it be, will it be something else? I know in my life, the journey of, of coming to America for, it's been years in the making. And, and I know at the beginning, it was, you know, at the end, it was hard to, there were seasons where when I was squeezed, there was no, there wasn't joy coming out. There was anxiety, there was stress, there was depression, there was worry. There were all these other things that, that were coming out that wasn't, that wasn't, um, wasn't right. But I'm so grateful that God still held me. He still managed to give me this joy that I have now because at the time when I was squeezed, there was, there was, joy wasn't coming out. And so through the highs and lows that happen, my hope for this church is that as we are, as we are squeezed, that joy comes out. 
when, when things get delayed, when, when, when things happen. And, and, and I know that sometimes things happen in our life that we've caused and there's a consequence. We make a bad mistake and there's a, there's a consequence to that. But, but I know that sometimes something just happens that we had no control over. And will we have joy that comes out of it? Will we, I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about it today. I, I miss, I miss uh, South Africa a lot today. And I'll tell you why. Jen's brother, he lives in the UK and he's actually uh, in South Africa now and he's gone to visit our old church that him and I and us were all part of uh, for his community church. And he's gone to visit them and I was just thinking like, how wonderful. I can't wait to go back and celebrate with them. All the goodness that God's doing here. Because they've been part of it. They, they helped disciple and prepare us and for 15 years they did it. And I just, I missed them a lot today. When I woke up and I saw pictures of him at the church and with people, drove past the old home with all the burglar guards and the gates and the security fencing, we took a picture of it. And, and I was just, I, I miss it a lot today. Not to say I, I, I love you guys, but I just, I miss it. I hope, I hope you see that. I just, I can't wait to celebrate with them, all the goodness of what God's doing here. And they celebrate. Remember over Christmas, if you haven't seen it, we, we showed the, the, the video from all the people around the world saying Merry Christmas Church Experience West Chase. And it was, it was awesome. And this is what William Barclay says. He's a biblical commentator. He says, Christian joy is independent of the things on earth because it has its source in a continual presence of Christ. Can you, when, when hardship happens and, and, and what comes out of, it is, out of us is joy, that's so countercultural that people are going to be fascinated with it. They're going to ask questions about it because they know that in the worldly sense, when there's hardship and there's, and there's struggles, the natural response is, is woe is me and nothing works out well and, and how can I go carry on and all this. But, but when we turn that and we flip it and we have joy, people are going to be so fascinated with that. They're going to, maybe it, it piques the interest. How, how can you find joy in the situation that you find yourself in? How can you have, how can you have joy? And it's not ignorant joy. It's, it's, it's still being very aware of the circumstances, but, but you're not letting those circumstances or those storms that you, that you face to rob the joy that you have. I, I think of, of Horatio Spafford. Do you, do you know the story of Horatio Spafford in, in the late 1800s? Uh, he was a businessman, lovely Christian man uh, in Chicago, and he had uh, lots of business. And, and in, in 1873, he literally lost his entire business in Chicago. There was a massive fire that came through Chicago and literally lost all of his business. And so him and the family, he had his w wife and about, I think four girls, and they're going on a boat to come and see their, their friend in, in England uh, called D.L. Moody, and they were going to go on like a bit of a, a preaching trip with him and, and so they were very excited with this whole trip and but now all the fires just happened so Horatio said to his wife and the girls you, you go on the ship ahead of me I'll, I'll finish up what I need to do and I'll be a week or two behind you I just need to sort out all this stuff because he'd literally lost his whole business and he's halfway across the, they're halfway across the ocean and this other boat comes across them and literally 261 people died they were in the boat including the four girls so eventually when he hears us, he gets a telegram from his wife when the wife was gets, got saved and is in England now and all she says is saved alone. And so he knows that the, all of his daughters have gone. He's just lost pretty much his business. He's just lost all of his kids. So the first thing he does, he gets on, his, he gets on the, the, the next boat out and he, he goes on the boat there and, he, and, he, and he's at the area. He asked the captain, I want you to show me the area where this accident happened, where this, where this devastation happened. And he and he went there and he wrote these words, it is well with my soul. You know the song, it is well with my soul? He wrote it. He said, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And I was thinking, I, I've, I've known this story for years, and I was thinking, how? How is that possible? How is it possible that a man who's just lost his, his kids, his, his business, how is it possible that he can get to the exact area where this devastation happened and he can write, it is well with my soul? See, that is the way that God wants us to live. He, he wants us to live that way. He, he works out the detail. Jen mentioned it in the welcome. She says, God will work out the detail. Our goal and our role and our focus is intimacy with him. If we have intimacy with him and that's all that we focus on, he's going to take care of all the details. If we abide in him, the fruit will come. If we abide in him, we know that the last in fruit will come. The more we abide in him, the closer we get to him. That is how he wants us to live. He wants us to live with a, every moment of every day to be filled with joy. Regardless of what, what's to come, regardless of whether there's highs and lows, whatever the case is, he wants us to live with so much joy. Now, you, you should know me by now. If you've known me longer than a week, you, you pretty much know that I'm thrifty. Hey? You, you know that I'm thrifty. Pretty much everything I'm wearing is secondhand. These are new because I was given them, but this is secondhand, that's secondhand, uh, the watch is secondhand. 
So I'm thrifty. You, you know this. When my boys see something with a, with a price tag on it, they oh, Dad, was that, did you buy something new? It's like a shock to them. <laughs> or if we get them a birthday present that's got a tag on, Dad, this is new. Can we return it and get my... No, we can't return it. We're not returning it. <laughs> so... Um, I'm so grateful that Jesus paid full price for my joy and your joy. I'm so glad that we weren't on markdown. We weren't at the end of season. We weren't on the, the buy one, get one free shelf. Jesus paid full price for your joy, full price for it. There was no discount. And we need to act like we deserve it. We need to act like we, as the body of Christ, as the, we need to act like we, we are aware of the of the of the joy that was set before him, that he endured the cross like we talked about last week. We need, to, we need to act in the way that we are just full of joy because we know that he paid full price for our joy, that you and me can live you, that the reason that we are here is, a, is an overflow of the joy that he has within themselves. And out of that was spilled out this expression of joy. And that's why we are here. And that is so amazing. This is what Jesus said in John 15, 11. He says, I've told you these things so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Isn't that amazing? Jesus paid the ultimate price for us, for you and for me. And it's joy for him to have it. And so Joshua, Comelli, you guys can come up. But I was, you know, I, I, I enjoy maths and, and uh, not, I, I think my kids are getting to that age now where, where their maths is like overtaking me. Because maths now apparently is different to the maths that I did like 20 years ago. I don't know how maths can change, but anyways. <laughs> and so I was thinking about the, the, us as a church. What, what do I want this church to be known for? What is the vision that I have for this? What is the goal that I have? And I, and I hope that it's joy more than anything, but I, I put a bit of an equation together for what this looks like. If we remain in Jesus, if we remain in him and we abide in him and we, and we lean on him and we rejoice in him and we, we go to him and we, we're thankful in, in, in the highs and the lows and, and we find the joy, then the natural response that will come out of that is revival in here. And I know that some of us, we maybe get scared of the word revival. And that's okay. We can take a deep breath. Because revival starts here. It starts in here. If we remain in Him, and if we rejoice in Him, out of that will be a revival in our hearts. There's a gap in here that will only be filled by Him, friends. And there will be a revival in our hearts. And out of that, there will be a revival in this church and out there and in the community because it starts here. And like Joshua, I have like play on words and, and I talked about R&R, &R, you know, rest and relaxation. I think we need some R&R, &R, some remaining and some rejoicing. And so we're going to rejoice now. We're going to sing a song and I really want us to, to sing it with joyful hearts. I want us to sing it with just being, just being joyful of the Father and the fact that we get to do this. What a joy it is to be here. What a joy it is to do His work. And so Father, I just pray, Lord, that you bless us, that you, that you lead us, that your face shines on us, Father. I pray. That, Lord, no, 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 I pray for this year ahead for us as a church, Lord. I pray that we will be just filled with joy because we are abiding in you. We are remaining in you. And we are rejoicing in you always, Lord. I pray that, that no matter what happens this year, through the highs and the lows, that we will just focus on you. Because that's where joy is found. I pray, Lord. I just pray that we will be known for the joy that we have for one another, the joy that we have, the love that we have for one another, but the joy that we have that we find in you. And so maybe there's, maybe there's someone here or, or, or a few people here that's, that's lacked joy. They've, they've been in that place. I, I've, if I just think of my life, There have been times where I've been dragged to church. There have been times I've been sitting in church not wanting to be there, not wanting to be exposed for my lack of joy, not wanting to be exposed by my, my lack of faith or my, um, I don't know, I just, there was a season when I just felt that I, I wasn't worthy to even be at church. How crazy is that, friends? How crazy is it that I felt I didn't belong? This is the one place you belong more than anywhere. You belong in the body of Christ. This is the one place where you can put up your hand and say, I don't know what's coming or I do know what's coming and it scares me. 
I'm so grateful that in that place God found me, that in that place He planted the seed of joy that is flourishing, that is producing fruit now, but not because I'm anything special, but just because I'm abiding in Him. And so if that is you this morning, I just want you to pray in your heart, like, Lord, please help me. Help me, Father. Help me to just remain in you. Help me to not be overwhelmed by the worries of this world. Help me to just find my joy in you. He will give it to you. If you remain in him, the joy will come. It's natural, friend. But hold on. And so, Father, thank you. Thank you for just your spirit being here. Lead us and guide us, Father. We want to make much of you in all things. And we just, we thank you for everything that you're doing. We pray this in your name. Amen. Before our usher team comes forward to receive our tithes and offerings and response cards, here are a few important things happening with our CE family. If you're hungry for God to do more in your life and want to learn how to get more connected with CE, this class is your next step. First class is an opportunity for you to learn more about our history, beliefs, mission, vision, and how you can benefit from getting more involved. So let us know you're interested in attending the next class on Sunday, January 28th. Write first class on your response card. As our ushers come forward to collect our response cards and receive our tithes and offerings, many people make New Year's resolutions, but there's nothing more important than resolving to put God first in every area of your life. One way we can do this is by putting Him first in our budget through tithing. Tithe means first tenth, back to God what He has given to us. He says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Malachi 3.10. God can do more through what we have when we place it in his hands first. Let's start the year right by putting God first and watch how he builds his kingdom through us together in 2024. Thank you for being on mission with us to help more people experience a full life in Jesus Christ.
Hey, thanks for joining us today for Church Experience Online. We hope this service has been a blessing to you and it's been spiritually impacting in your life. Hey, before you head out, just a couple real quick things. If you made a commitment to Jesus today, scan this QR code, fill out this form, and we would love to reach out to you and see how we can serve you, how we can help you move closer to Him. Also, I want to encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you can stay with us each and every week and never miss a service. Or you can head over to our Church Experience website where we have all kinds of information to help you experience a full life in Jesus Christ. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.